quindi dovrebbero entrare adesso, no? Sì, sì, stanno pre hanno aperto. Sì. Ok. There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Fabio Nascimbeni speaking from the ATF, and uh, I would like to warmly welcome you to this uh, meetup of the community. This is our second meetup, which is not a webinar where we are going to discuss technical issues, but we're going to focus on some uh, developments of, the, of our community of innovative educators, uh, presenting you what happened during this week and uh, also discussing a bit uh, what uh, is uh, next for our community. Let me quickly share my screen. I hope you can see it. Uh, this is uh, briefly the agenda that uh, we are gonna we are gonna have today. So first of all, I will briefly report to you what happened on Monday and Tuesday during the ETF new learning event here in Torino. Um, and where we actually um, uh, run a number of activities, including an evaluation that has brought uh, to the three winning practices of the 2022 ETF Innovative Teaching and Learning Award. The three winners are here with us, so you will hear from them about their practices to have an understanding of what we have been discussing and who are the winners. And then at uh, 2.35, more or less, we will start this co-creation session like we did uh, back in March this year. And this uh, is a session where we would like to hear from you as uh, members of the community, as ambassadors of the community in different, uh, in, with, with their different roles, to collect ideas and to make sure that uh, our work plan for 2023, so for next year, is actually in line with the, your needs and your expectations. And then uh, the webinar will officially end at three, so in one hour from now, but then we are gonna have 
some more time, a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes for some informal knowledge exchange. So no recording, but just if you want to stay there and to talk to us, to talk among yourself, we can have some, some knowledge exchange there. So this is the agenda of the day. You see it's quite intense. I will now quickly tell you the story of what happened uh, this week. So first of all, a bit of context, as you, as some of you know, the our community, ETF community of innovative educators uh, is uh, one of the activities of our new learning initiative. And uh, during the event on Monday, we discussed also the other activities of the Creating New Learning Initiatives, trying to connect them, as you can see, in this circle with our community. So we, we are developing tools specifically for educators to support innovation. We are running research on specific, specific innovative practices. We are supporting a few innovation partnerships and we have a specific uh, focus on digital education. All of this you can find in, uh, in our website and uh, which is linked through the community web space, but this is just to give you an overview of where the community sits within the ETF and how it can be connected with other activities. Now, this is a bit of a recap about the Innovative Teaching and Learning Competition, which we launched in the summer, we launched in June. By the end of July, we have received more than 750 completed submissions from 62 countries, so a very very good result. We would like to thank all the, all the people who submitted their applications. These applications were evaluated by the ETF and by an international jury, which I will show you in a moment. And this brought to the selection of 10 finalist practices, which we brought to Torino and we met with them on Monday and Tuesday this week. It was great to see live the finalist. At the same time, we also selected two special mentions that are two practices which did not fully qualify as individual innovative teaching and learning practices, but were so good and that we wanted to we wanted to award them actually also because we received a lot of international projects and a lot of practices from outside Europe. So these, these are the two areas I will show you in a moment also these two special mentions. Then what happened in Torino? Of course, uh, the, we all our finalists presented their practice through, uh, the, through pitches, uh, like in a hackathon. Our jury evaluated them, and uh, two practices were selected uh, as winners by the jury, which will receive a, a certificate, an open badge, and they also received an award. And uh, one practice was selected by you, by the community. Actually, we had more than 4,000 votes, 14,000 votes online, which is also a very good result, we think. And one practice was selected, let's say, by as, as the winner by the overall community. We have so three uh, winners that are not uh, number one, number two, and number three. They are all the same. So we have three, let's say, uh, most inspiring practices, even if uh, what we kept on saying also during the event is that uh, all the uh, all the finalists actually are our winners because out of more than 750 submissions they were selected and so let's say they are the the top of the iceberg of our innovative community this is the uh, international jury which i would like to thank officially for their work you can see the pictures and the names there and uh, i would just like to to briefly mention the criteria for our evaluation which were the originality of the idea which stands behind the, the every practice, the importance of the challenge addressed in its context, of course, the impact of the practice, not so much in terms of big numbers. We did not look specifically for very large practices in terms of numbers, but in terms of depth of the impact in uh, on learning innovation. And of course, the real, actual, or potential transferability of the practice to other contexts, to other countries, to other educators. So this is uh, the this was the jury. 
Again, I will say, as I was saying before, we prepared a web page with all the 10 practices well described, the 10 finalists well described, and we received over 14,000 votes from a lot of countries. And out of these, we have one practice that I will show you in a moment. And then uh, mention an important, very important slide with the 10 finalists. Uh, all of these uh, finalists were gathered in uh, Torino, apart from one practice who which unfortunately couldn't be with us, but all the others were there. So you can see from uh, Tunisia, Morocco, um, Turkey, we had two practices from Turkey actually. And this is also in line with the very high number of practices we received from Turkey. So congratulations to the Turkish community for being so active. Then Serbia, Georgia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Israel. So these were the, the these are the faces, the names, and the countries of the finalists. Um, all of these you can find on the ATF website. I really encourage you to go and read their practices. They're really inspiring. They are actually telling 10 stories of innovation, 10 stories of uh, individual educators who are investing time and, and effort in making sure that their innovation is, uh, is actually not only working, but is visible, let's say, internationally. And this is what happened in Torino. So you can see here uh, our three of our uh, presenters, uh, which uh, gave their pitch, uh, showing uh, the impact of their practices, their transferability. You can see the jury there. So we had a very lively moment of presentations with questions, with suggestions. It was really, really rich, and I would say uh, very inspiring also for me and for the colleague at the ATF. These are the two special mentions. We have uh, one special mention regarding uh, European uh, and international project, which in this case was received by Bianca Biziak from All Digital, which is a European network based in Brussels. You can also see there the mini award that uh, all, our fine, all our winners received. And the second practice by Goodness Kelechi was uh, actually broadcasted from Nigeria because this is uh, an extra European practice. So it's, uh, let's say, it was uh, actually a special guest, unfortunately connected only online, but was also able to present a very inspiring and uh, I would say uh, original practice in the, in the field of upskilling of unemployed people. Of course, we worked a lot. Also, we, we, we discussed a lot. As you can see there on the right, we had a number of workshops of co-development moment. You see, we also had fun. We, we built up this uh, mini community within our community. So it was a very rich moment of sharing, not only of knowledge, but also sharing life experiences with, uh, with our finalists, with the members of the jurors and so on. And, this is the most important, I would say, the moment that many people uh, have been expecting in the last months. Uh, here we have the, the who are the winners. So as some of you have seen in the broadcasted uh, uh, ceremony that we, we have uh, streamed on Tuesday afternoon through the web, the three winners, again, from the um, community voting and from the jurors voting are, here they are, they are, Mrs. Hedia Selami from Tunisia with the practice called the Theater to Strengthen ICT Learning. Congratulations, Hedia. We have Mrs. Katarina Velkovic from Serbia with the practice called Escape Room and Education Games. And last but not least, uh, we have uh, Mr. Selchuk Yusuf Arslan from Turkey with the practice called STEM Stands Together. You can see them here smiling with their award. Again, these are the three uh, winners. But what we say all the time uh, in, uh, with the colleagues at ETF and with the winners is that uh, somehow, let's say, this award ceremony was, of course, very important, but was a, a, an excuse to, to discuss, to talk about teaching and learning innovation. So not only the three winners are important, but the 10 finalists, and I would say, the 750 people from the community who submitted the practice uh, are very important. We are at the moment uh, going back to each one of them individually and uh, in order to make sure that their practice will be 
uh, broadcasted, uh, sorry, in our database. Uh, and so the, let's say we, you will hear from these three uh, speakers in a, a few seconds. Now, another important thing we did at the event was to discuss with rather important actors such as UNESCO, CEDEFOP, the European Commission, and the International Training Center of the ILO. You can see there the members of the panel. We discussed how to support mainstreaming of teaching and learning innovation. And as you can see there, we have our hybrid panel and we have here, we started from the results of the last webinar we had in mid-November with some of you. Now, he, this, these are the main takeaways from the, from the discussion that we would like to share with you. The first thing is that uh, a, a number of issues exist, of course, uh, and it's not so easy to, to smoothly and effectively support uh, teaching and learning innovation, we need supports and incentives, and we need to be able to measure the impact of our support. We need to make sure that we promote uh, disruptive and new innovations uh, in our linear and resistant organizations. Uh, our participants also shared a number of tips, including the importance not only of educators, but of education managers and other intermediaries, the importance of networks and communities, and especially the fact that uh, system innovation can be achieved in a, with a step-by-step -step approach. So by, by convincing and by, by transferring the practice also one teacher at a time in order to then reach a larger impact. And then a very nice idea came out to keep on working together with these institutions. So for next year, actually, we have a, a number of nice partnerships in place that we are preparing and so that uh, through this community, you can also get exposed to what UNESCO is doing, the European Commission with its activities doing, and the ILO, and so on and so forth. So the more we proceed in our journey, the more we are getting connected to like-minded organizations. Now, last two things before leaving the floor to our uh, educators. Uh, we will discuss after the presentations with you uh, what are your ideas for the next year uh, work of the community. Here, I would just like to share with you two things that we are going to be doing for sure. The first is the upcoming uh, uh, innovative teaching and learning database. You can see there how it will look like. It will be a database where we are positioning in the different countries the practices that we are mapping. So starting from the winners, but also then slowly adding the different practices that we are getting from that, that we received from um, through the competition. And of course, we will give the possibility also to users, to all of you, to keep on submitting practices. And the idea there is to search by country and or by field, of course, of uh, of the practice. So the idea here is really to respond to the need that you as community members expressed some months ago on the need to focus really on real inspiring practices. And finally, uh, we are working and we will soon be launching a system of open badges that are online mini certificates that you can see there again as a mock-up that uh, all the people that will actively participate in our community activities by presenting in a webinar, by, for example, uh, submitting a practice uh, and by promoting what we do, you will be receiving by winning, of course, uh, our competition, by becoming a finalist and so on and so forth. You will be receiving uh, these open badges that you can then show and showcase uh, through your online profiles and so on. Next year, we're going to have a webinar presenting this, presenting what open badges are and how you can use them. And we will use this webinar also to present the first open badges that the community will award. So two new things coming up, the database and the open badges. But of course, this is not everything. We would like them to, to uh, know from you later on in the, in the next session what you uh, expect from us. But before that, actually, I think it's the time to give the floor to our three winners. I'm thrilled for you to be here with us. I see Hedia already in pole position to start with your presentation. So the word to the winners. Roberto, I don't know if you want to introduce them. 
Yes, hello everybody. My name is Roberto Righi and uh, well, I just have to pass the floor to the three winners. As Fabio said, uh, we don't we didn't have uh, a golden, silver or bronze medal, so they are three <laughs> real uh, winners in the same ranking and uh, we just used uh, we just decided to use a chronological well uh, alphabetical order to for the presentation. So the first one would be from Tunisia. Happy to see you again, Hedia, <laughs> after a couple of days. And uh, Hedia Mirisilami will present uh, her practice. Please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you for all of you. Um, uh, the presentation, the title is clear to the RCT learning. Um, we should mention that we um, there is a monk lack of motivation of our students uh, as they rarely participate in our class session, uh, if they are present in our class session, because uh, absenteeism is very frequent. Besides, there is a massive use of a smartphone, whether it is inside our classroom or outside, as they uh, stay late uh, looking or watching uh, t uh, movies. We also <clears throat> should mention the loss of interest of our students as they make less effort analyze the content of our courses and this is very evident when we uh, correct the, um, their exams. Uh, on the other side, um, in Tunisia lectures at the university are given uh, via the French language and we mentioned the regret of uh, the French language uh, in favor of English uh, and we are deeply convinced that our students should um, master our mother tongue, which is Arabic, uh, the French language, and also the English language. All of these um, uh, phenomena are reinforced uh, because of the COVID uh, crisis. So, our, our position or our innovation is to assess students uh, via theater. So, we asked our students to write and to present a theater play related to the models we uh, teach. Uh, and these models deal essentially uh, out uh, ICT, such as big data, databases, data mining, and so on. So we asked the students to be in group of two or three, and one of them had to take the role of um, employee, which is uh, an employee, and he has to convince his boss that using different concepts or introducing these different concepts and the associated tools in the company where they work uh, would be will be certainly um, will certainly improve the company and uh, its management so uh, since the beginning of the semester students are aware that uh, the final mark related to uh, this session will be uh, 40 persons related to the script of this theater, and they had to put or to upload the script on the moderate platform, and 60% uh, is uh, related to the play. We did this experiment uh, with three in three semesters, uh, with three models, and with three sections, a master's degree of human resources, a master's degree uh, with 20 students, with master's degree of data science, it was about about 20, 20 students, and uh, the last year of lessons in, in business intelligence with about 100 students. Um, and at the, the end of each year, we asked students to fill in the same questionnaire and uh, via or based, of, uh, based on the results of this questionnaire, we can say that students, uh, this, uh, this had the students to master uh, the models content as they were all more more or less obliged to look at the uh, content of the courses to look for arguments to convince their uh, boss. Besides, this helped them, them to improve their uh, language in French, as some of them were obliged also to look for um, French rules. And they mentioned that essentially writing the script was uh, helped them to improve their knowledge uh, in, um, in French. Uh, besides, these students uh, globally appreciate this experience and also asked to extend it 
to the other models and also to repeat it for the uh, next uh, session. Our experiment is uh, unique uh, because it requires no infrastructure. It requires just one and uh, two or three chairs to simulate a meeting with uh, the boss. So uh, besides, it leads students to collaborate and to improve their skills. And uh, its uniqueness is uh, because it's used with ICT, literature management, some uh, experiment like it with uh, essentially with um, languages to introduce French or English. Um, one experiment is related to uh, teaching physics, however, using ICT with theater and um, the, the uniqueness also of uh, uh, our experiment is that it may be replicated, uh, whether it is in Sahara on, or in Siberia, as it requires no electricity, no internet, it requires no infrastructure. It also can be used with initial education, initial training, uh, continuous training, vocational training, uh, and different models. Besides, it requires no extra effort for the teacher. In the country, uh, uh, it is more or less um, funny for a teacher. Uh, what we have learned is that uh, it has finally, um, I, I, I can say, um, real impact on students, whether it is in the models content or in the language. And, uh, so students have mastered uh, their content uh, because besides we, it is also an opportunity for us to discover hidden talents of our students. We have a very funny uh, experiment and it is an opportunity for us as a teacher to instantly uh, correct students uh, because with this, the, uh, the other method, we are more or less uh, frustrated because we see errors and we can't um, correct students. Uh, what we can learn is uh, this, we should uh, be our uh, persistence because in these different experiment and this year, again, we are repeating this, this experiment, uh, students are always against this experiment, essentially at the beginning. Then, once uh, tested students adhere and uh, um, request to uh, repeat it. Uh, besides, it is, um, um, let's say, funny uh, uh, for teachers or uh, for students, and uh, it is um, easily to adapt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hedia. Unfortunately, there were some uh, issues with, with your voice, more or less, but I think that we had the chance to uh, catch everything that you that you explain. Thank, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to um, to spend more time. I just pass the floor to Katarina Velikovic. Mm -hmm. She is uh, from Serbia. And um, Katarina, if you want, you can. Uh, I can uh, share my presentation. Share your okay. Presentation. Um, Hedia, can you please stop your sharing? Yeah. Come on, okay. Kedia. <laughs> let let Katarina present, please. Yeah, it is okay. <laughs> is it okay? Uh, no, I. Eh, yes. Now it's, it's okay. Okay. Yes. okay. I close it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. I will close. Do you see my presentation? Yes. Not yet. No. You see. Roberto? No, we don't see it yet. I share it, so I, I try again. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, uh, I, if it, okay, I was thinking something is happening. Okay, fine, perfect. Okay. okay. I think you can see it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, as you know, nowadays students use technology a lot, more than teachers and parents, but their understanding of it is incomplete. They think they're experts, but when they need to understand and identify uh, valid information, solve some security problems on the internet, they do not know how to use technology in appropriate manner. So the main problem uh, is 
how efficiently students can use technology for learning to increase their digital literacy skills. So uh, I hope the movie will start, okay? Uh, with the help of my students, uh, we created an open digital educational content, which can increase level of digital literacy of students. So more precisely, we create an uh, application uh, transforming and adapting the accredited ICT uh, literacy curricula into the virtual world, as you see, Minecraft, in the form of an escape room. An escape room is a game that is set in a specific room, and the goal is to find hidden clues and solve uh, puzzles, which lead you uh, to the room exit, uh, but with the time limit. Uh, as the, I hear some, some... There is some background noise, yeah. yes. Yes, I hear also. Okay. Uh, as the Minecraft environment is today the most used in the educational world, we decided to use it to transform and adapt mandatory teaching material about internet and safety the internet on the internet, the ability of information on the internet into a digital content in the form of virtual rooms. Uh, we created seven virtual rooms. Uh, one room presents one topic of the teaching material and each room uh, is designed to look like the team students uh, will be learning about. Uh, for example, uh, the room online ident identity looks like a runaway fashion. In this room, uh, the player uh, is under the lights of a fashion runaway and exposed to all the possible danger situation uh, on the internet, uh, which can happen uh, if he or she does not care about uh, uh, safety on the internet. So we created a virtual world in which students and teachers uh, will, Im uh, will be immersed in the teaching process by solving a uh, real life situation. Uh, in Serbia, we have a problem because um, uh, students have low level of digital literacy. For example, they do not know how to react with inappropriate content appears uh, on their screens. Uh, they do not know how to react uh, and deal with a lot of uh, information uh, on the internet. Uh, they don't know how to validate it and how to transform the information into the knowledge. So. Uh, for us, for uh, our team, team of my students and myself, it was very important to create a virtual education package. It's called uh, Escape Room, in which we transform a teaching topics into the form that is understandable and receptive for today's generation. Uh, and what is unique uh, uh, for this concept, for the first time, uh, uh, we create one part. Uh, uh, we one part of the mandatory subject called computer science. Uh, we transform into the digital content, open learning content. And second, the most important uh, was students involvement because they were designers, validators, and testers. Uh, this methodology can be replicated. Uh, uh, to the other subject. To do that, as a teacher, you need to be creative to adapt teaching material into the digital form. You need to be open to use uh, technology in your classroom in a different, unconventional way. You, of course, need the Minecraft license. And uh, finally, you need to recognize students who want to work uh, with you. Uh, this is a last slide, and uh, on this slide, you can uh, shoot the QR code and download the escape room or copy the link and to play with us. <laughs> That's it, Roberto. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Katerina, also for keeping the time. Mm -hmm. That's, that was very, very clear. And uh, as Fabio was suggesting in the chat, please, if you have any comments, uh, and suggestion, use the chat to, to record them. As uh, so, I'm stop sharing screen, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. thank you. So thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's your turn. Last but not least, Silchuk Arslan from Turkey, Turkey. And uh, 
he will talk about stem stand together. I don't remember if uh, you prefer that we are in charge of uh, sharing the screen, I guess so. So I would ask the colleagues uh, from Opino to share your presentation. Yes, fine, thank you. Hi again, Roberto, uh, do you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay, uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Sajip Sparslan. Uh, I will give a presentation about my STEM Stands Together project. Um, next, next slide, please. Uh, so why did uh, I start this project? Turkey was about 4 million refugees. Uh, moreover, approximately 1 million of them are students. And in my school, there are more than 50 refugee students. And this is 5% uh, of all students. And the biggest problem is uh, Turkish and refugee students don't communicate with uh, each other. Next slide, please. Uh, according to research that was conducted, the refugee students' problems are language barrier and compatibility problem, cultural differences, not being accepted by Turkish students, insufficient academic development. Next slide. STEM is a popular approach that aims to teach different disciplines from an interdisciplinary perspective. In this project, STEM was used as a common language of Turkish and refugee students. Next slide. Next slide please, thank you. Uh, as you. As you can see from the image here, I ask the students to develop a material where they can learn the angles in geometry with robotics. The reason why I chose to use microbit, we can use the simulator free, even if not physically uh, microbit. This is an important detail for the sustainability of my activity. Next, please. The aim of this activity is to enable students both learn and socialize through a workshop. The target group consists of 16 students. Half of them are Turkish and half are refugee, uh, refugees from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Iran. Next, please. Let's watch a one minute video about the workshop. Uh, Robert, yes, thank you. Uh, the, uh, this is pre preparation uh, process. After that, uh, we started activity with an icebreaker and students learn each other's name. Next, they did internet research about Angus. After that, they developed the materials in pairs. As you can see, they have successfully developed the materials that show different angles by pressing the buttons. Finally, the activity ended with certificate ceremony. Next slide, please. Uh, I would like to highlight some points of the activity. Students work in pairs. There was a Turkish and refugee student in each pair. Even though there was only two people in each group, there was plenty of uh, collaboration between various pairs. And this was the greatest achievement of this activity. Next slide. Uh, due to differences in their educational backgrounds, it's important to differentiate activities that are done in the classroom. Uh, the refugee students have little coding experience, whereas the Turkish students are more confident in this area. Uh, because of this reason, Turkish students encouraged and had their pairs. After students developed the material, they presented it to the class and received peer review. Next, please. Why is this activity important? Students have the opportunity to develop both their hard and soft skills. Next, next slide. 
uh, the activity took place six months ago, the proof of this project's success is the fact that even after completion of the project, students were interacting with each other outside the classroom. In other words, they broke down the communication barriers. Next slide. Uh, because of the target group and the use of STEM as a common language, this activity was inclusive, innovative, and unique. Next slide. And dissemination, this activity can be replicated with both refugee students and students in need of special education. Next slide. As you can see from the image here, this practice has already started to become widespread, both at my school and in other cities in Turkey. Next slide. In addition, the activity took place in national press and TV channels and published on the European School Network. And most importantly, I prepared a guideline and included some sample learning scenarios for Turkish and English. This way, any teachers in the world will be able to easily adapt this activity to their classroom. Next slide. In a nutshell, what have I learned? Students broke down the communication barriers and used them as a common language. For this activity, I use school NGOs collaboration and students develop both hard and soft skills. What can we all learn? This activity is easily adaptable, low cost and sustainable. Teachers can benefit from such activities to ensure strong communication among students. The activity can be adapted to all lessons. It is not the subject that matters, but the idea that this activity advocates. Last slide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Seljuk. Thank you, everybody. As you may have seen, we had uh, different kinds of practices. We had some of them that were using very much uh, technologies, ICT in general, digital tools, and so on. The other were that were less technology, technological, but they were all uh, really inspiring. In this case, for example, we also had some uh, um, um, focus on the on the social inclusion and putting together and facilitating integration of immigrants and refugees and so on and uh, and so um, we we are sure that uh, these three but also the other seven practices were really uh, worth it and uh, they deserved uh, the 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 prizes and so and we hope that uh, they also can be transferable and they can be a, a good practice to follow for for all of you and for those who are who are interested and okay so um i think that we can uh, go on with uh, with the next uh, session and uh, i will start uh, uh, sharing the screen And uh, I would ask uh, Marta, Marta Tibura, to introduce uh, this uh, session Hello. that we decided to <laughs> title mm -hmm. co-creation, but it's uh, mainly a way to present you as the community and to reflect together about the future of the community. Please, Marta. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marta Tibura. It's a huge pleasure for me to be here and to to listen to these great results and to learn more about the winners, about your practices. So it's really, really, uh, I think, a great value for the whole community. So uh, I must say it's uh, from my personal uh, point of view, it's uh, uh, a great satisfaction also to be part of this initiative of this team because we with Roberto, we jumped into the community in May, and uh, the first task was to prepare the launch of uh, of the call. So now in December, it's great to see the results, and uh, it's really visible that it enriched very much the community, and we believe that it will also be a kind of fuel for the next year and for the next activities of the community. So uh, next slide, please. Super. So uh, the community is uh, growing very, very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, you will recognize this is the uh, profile of uh, on, on of the community on open space. Mm -hmm. And it's the link. 
and we are uh, we are a big number of uh, of people we are more than 1000 it looks we are 1284 and um we uh, we know that this is actually our power and a huge potential so uh, during this session uh, we would like also to learn what we can do with all this potential that it is in the in the community and uh, and uh, take the most of it so actually there are two like objectives of the session co-creation session we called it co-creation because we would like actively to involve you and to hear your voice and uh, this will be also kind of element that we would like to implement in all webinars that will will come in the next months uh, so the first thing we will give you a short overview of the community community and then the second part will be kind of brainstorming planning of the activities in 2023 so uh, the community started in september 21 with the mission to foster knowledge exchange in the etf partner countries on teaching and learning innovation and uh, preparing this slide, I was thinking, actually, I was putting myself in the shoes of members of the community. And I was more thinking like, OK, how I can contribute to the community, but also how I benefit from the community. So uh, there are there are, the community gives us, gives you many ways uh, of uh, many, many benefits, let's say. So you can, of course, learn more about new teaching and learning practices through the webinars that we are organizing monthly and uh, through the discussions, through the platform and so on. You can promote your, uh, your uh, work. You can promote the work of your organization, of your school through the open space. You can uh, create blog posts, uh, um, articles, uh, which are then published on the open space and are available to all people. So uh, and and the third point, which is the most, which is very important, is also that the community gives you the way to network. So you find a network of people from all over the world, and you can you can create uh, future collaboration opportunities, but also find uh, new training opportunities through this uh, through this community. So this is uh, uh, this is uh, very important. For us inside the community, uh, it's very important the work that ambassadors are doing, uh, which help us to increase uh, the visibility of the community on the national level, in the local communities, but also internationally. And uh, there is a very nice also group on Facebook uh, uh, that, that help us to, to increase the visibility of the community and so on. Uh, the other thing that we are issuing is also the newsletter every second month that also all people who are subscribed to the community receive. And this is some way to keep you updated about, uh, about the events, webinars, and so on. Next slide, please. Okay, so on the previous slide, uh, you could see how we are supporting the uh, innovation. And here, actually, it is how the innovation happens inside the community through this, uh, this call uh, and award. Yes, thank you. Okay, we thought it would be also nice to present again to the new members who are the community managers that you see on open space. Uh, maybe you wonder who is the person who is sending the message, the welcome message, or who is sending the email and who is behind the profile on open space and so on. So the main, the core group is Ermina Martini and Fabio Nascimbeni from ETF and uh, there is steps supporting them and is represented by Roberto Righi and by myself. Okay, on open space, uh, if, you, if you go on the community, you will see uh, uh, the profile of the community manager, which is, uh, which is uh, me and Roberto uh, adding um, different uh, posts and uh, information about uh, the coming webinars, events, and so on. And I would like to sh to highlight this uh, um, box. So the bottom uh, plus, the bottom add, this is actually how you can add new event, how you can add blog posts. So it works uh, in the same way also uh, 
on your profile. So we are very much welcome to add information through your profile. And you are also very much welcome to revise your profile, add information like from where you are and so on. So it all helps us also to, to network and, and so on. Next one, please. All right. And now I will give floor to Roberto, which will uh, uh, show you uh, a kind of identity kits that we prepared of the community members. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. thank you. So we are at the identity kit. Uh, what is the identity kit? We would like to identify right. who the community yeah. members yeah. are. Yeah. And uh, yeah. first of all, we would like uh, to ask you who you think you are or you, you think you can be. We identified uh, four main roles within the community. And um, now I will uh, shortly explain uh, what we are thinking about for each of these roles. The first one is the explorer. The explorer can be each of the members. Uh, it's a person uh, who started using innovative teaching approaches, but maybe needs some more inspiration to, to go on with the work. And the most of all, what is the role inside the community? It's just uh, attending the thematic webinars, reading some blog posts that are available, and of course, being subscribed and registered in the, in the community newsletter. And uh, so, of course, there's nothing bad in being an explorer because it's the first step. But uh, on the other hand, maybe if you want to take a step farther, you can also be an innovator. Innovator, of course, is someone who already use a wide range of innovative teaching approaches in a confident way and uh, is ready to enhance uh, their professional activities and uh, how is behaving inside the community, mainly participating in an active way in the webinars. Active way can mean making, uh, asking questions, commenting, giving feedback and so on sometimes creating some blog posts on the on open space, uh, making comments on the content that is available. So it's it's a some it's something more, it's a more active approach uh, in the in the community. Um, the third one is uh, the pioneer. So the pioneer is, uh, I would say, uh, the top level of uh, of the community men members because it means that uh, his or her role inside the community, is uh, not only to passively attend the webinars, but also creating and sharing content, oh, sometimes you. being a speaker at the webinars, uh, diffusing information also beyond the community. And uh, for example, we consider pioneers uh, all those who uh, submitted the practices and uh, were finalists at the, at the award for innovative teaching and learning. So. It's uh, some more, uh, some more activity that we require at uh, the, at the pioneer, who is also a leader in the, in innovation and sometimes a source for for inspiration. And uh, the ambassador is the only category that is uh, specifically created by ETF. So ETF decide who will be an ambassador for for the countries, for the partner countries that are involved in uh, in all the initiatives uh, and the ambassador is really committed in the community building activities is a mentor for the new members Hello. promote all the initiatives in his or her country and support the community to engage new members um, so just to be uh, to, to be sure that we are on the same page so the ambassador is a role that is very important inside the community, but is something that is decided by, by ETF. But for the other three roles, explorer, innovators, and pioneers, is this is something that mm -hmm. you can decide about um, what you are. So I would uh, uh, interrupt the sharing, and uh, I would ask to... Uh, launch a Mentimeter and put we can put the link and we also can share the QR code if you want to join from from your mobile phone and as you can see here in the chat there is already 
the link that you can click on and uh, the question is very very simple so um, what is your role inside what do you think is your role inside the community okay thank you for for sharing and you can choose from from the three profiles so do you feel yourself more as a pioneer do you feel yourself more as an innovator or just as an explorer, so someone who is just observing and looking what what's happening, but of course, on the other hand, is also ready to to start doing something something more and something new. Okay, I see that people are are voting. Uh, don't be shy, and. Uh, uh, I'm happy to see that we already have six uh, uh, six pioneers, and uh, so it's it's not only, of course, uh, about uh, their own competencies and their own skills, but it's also about uh, your future role inside the community. So maybe you you foresee you plan that uh, in the future you will be more active, you will bring new content, you will maybe write more articles for the newsletter and so on <clears throat> of course if you have any questions please don't hesitate to write them in the in the chat column so we can we can wait a minute more for if people want to uh, to vote more i'm happy to see that we have uh, um uh, a good number of uh, of innovator of course uh, this is not a, a a statistic it would be valid uh, in uh, generally because uh, it's only based on uh, on the participants that uh, that we have today who are nevertheless more than 80 so i'm very happy to see that uh, but it can be uh, kind of uh, uh, yeah uh, a small sample of uh, who the members of the community uh, think to be. And why are we doing that? We're doing that because we would like to know you better. We would like to know who the members are. As Marta was saying in the beginning, we, we have uh, more or less 1,300 members in the community, but we don't exactly know uh, who they are. So also in the, in the following weeks, uh, you will receive uh, a short survey, an online survey that we will ask you to, to fill in because uh, it will be very, very helpful for us in order to create a picture of the community and to understand better, first of all, who you are, but also what do you expect and uh, uh, what you would like to do next year within the community. So exactly what you need, how can we help you and also what can you bring to the, to the community um so okay thank you very much i'm happy to see that we have many pioneers and many innovators uh, but also 11 explorers so this could be uh, a first a small picture of the of the situation and um uh, as we said uh, at the beginning, and uh, as also was written in the agenda that was uh, presented by Fabio, uh, we can have uh, five, ten minutes more for this uh, so-called co-creation session, because we would ask you another favor. Uh, we would ask you to uh, connect in a Jamboard. Uh, the Jamboard is a very simple uh, google tool where uh, that you can consider it as a kind of canva where you can uh, uh, stick your post-it uh, uh, bringing ideas comments and uh, suggestions so if you are so kind to connect to this link that is provided now in the in the chat um you will be led to uh, this uh, this board uh, titled Community of Innovative Educators in 2023. So what are we going to do next year? And uh, you can uh, simply 
maybe if I do it from here, it will be shown also in the Zoom. So you just have to um, put your mouse pointer on the sticky notes and you bring it here and uh, you can write, for example, that you are expecting to uh, uh, thematic webinars and then you have your you have your uh, suggestions published already. So um, please don't be don't be shy and uh, be creative. So this is the time for you to to tell your ideas and expectations. And uh, of course, we will do our best then to meet uh, your needs. I see people are, are writing. I'm very happy about it. Maybe we can also ask you to add uh, your name so we can uh, then be in touch also with you. There is, uh, for example, uh, enlarge the community to Africa. I think it sounds so all all initiatives sounds very good. Then we will have a deeper look. But maybe if you can add your name to to the proposal, though if you feel to to do it, it will be also a good idea. Okay, fine. Well, first of all, I'm happy to see that uh, our exercise on the roles was was uh, was quite clear, and I'm glad to see that uh, everybody is willing to to bring something to the community. And um, of course, any kind of uh, suggestions uh, also about uh, the future topics. So it's good that you would like to organize more webinars, for example. Uh, maybe you have a topic that you that you prefer that you would like to, to suggest, and that would be uh, very welcome. So we have more thematic webinars, learning about digital tools for evaluating competencies and uh, an innovation database created for Asia, something similar to the one started by ETF. Well, by the way, we are uh, we, we have just started together with Fabio to work on the on the database that will include uh, uh, the practices that were submitted during the, the call. Um, I don't know, Fabio, if you want to add something about it, if you have any news. No, basically the news is that the database will uh, will uh, start to be visible uh, in spring next year. So we we are we are thinking of March, and actually the as you can imagine we received more than seven hundred practices. So we are tempted to start uh, with a very large number of practices, but actually by talking to our experts and also with our innovations, we decided to to privilege the quality over quantity. So we will start small, actually, because it, we think it's important that every single practice there is clicking something in the mind of the readers. So we will go with waves. We hope to have the first uh, 100 um, cases uh, in March and then to go on. And for this also to, to, to keep, on, uh, keep on developing, we need your help. So. We, it will also be possible to submit practices, even if there will be no, no competition, at least for now. But uh, again, if you think that uh, the competition that we just organized was something useful, because it can facilitate the emergence uh, of uh, specific innovation, please put it in the, in the Jamboard. I see a lot of ideas. Thank you. And... Uh, also themes, I was writing, if you have a specific theme for a webinar that you would like to, you would like us to focus on or a country, if, uh, 
you know, Roberto before was mentioning the ambassadors. The ambassadors uh, are, are people who have been particularly active in the community and that are very well connected uh, in their in their national environment. So feel also free to use this gem board for everything. This is uh, at the moment, uh, imagine we are in like in a meeting with uh, some uh, 76 friends and colleagues. So feel free to, to throw your ideas there. Merav would like to say something. Yes. Let's Hello everyone. Raise Thank hands. You Hello, Merav. Uh, it was a great experience. I, I'm just another award here. It's Georgian IT Innovations Award. So I wanted just to say that competition works and it motivates. So uh, we'd like to expand. My suggestion would be to make uh, this competition uh, and also the community more recognizable everywhere. I met some friends here who just skipped and I, or either they haven't heard about the competition when, when I told them and when I shared my experiences, they were uh, happy that this uh, opportunity exists, but they were unhappy that they missed it. So it's kind of gets some traction. And I guess I think that uh, to make it more recognizable in um, many countries, uh, we need to promote it through many tools that are suggested here. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Merab. And uh, I see that uh, people are uh, keep on uh, writing post-its. Uh, as I wrote in the chat, you can also use the second page <laughs> if we don't have space enough. Uh, so if you go uh, upper center with your with your mouse mouse and click on the on the right arrow, you can go to the to the second page and you will find an empty board that you can it's fill in. As, as Jinan is saying and also Ahmed, feel free to use, to use also the chat, paste your ideas in the chat and we will, we will copy them in the, in the. Yeah, indeed. And if you want to say something, take uh, feel free to take the floor as Merab just did. Eh? We have now, I think, 10 more minutes. If you bear with us, if you have ideas of things to be done, for example, the idea of enlarging the community to Africa, I don't know if it is something that we can do as, a, as ETF, but we will surely look into that. We have already some activities within the ETF, which are slowly opening to Sub-Saharan Africa. As you know, we are working on the South Mediterranean, so from, from Morocco to, to the Middle East, but not below that. But of course, this is an important idea which came already, is already reflected in a couple of post-its. So feel free to put your ideas, even, you know, whatever comes to your mind, or to take the floor if you want. I or I don't know if we still have our um, winners with us, but uh, if uh, somebody has a question for them also, can feel free to, to ask it now. Hello. Hello, Hamed. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you so much for giving me this, uh, this opportunity to speak today in this webinar. Yeah, it is really a great opportunity and I'm very so excited for giving me this opportunity again. Well, um, my idea is, like I said on previous webinar, is, uh, it is very, very important and we, to expand this uh, webinar and engage more Africans, especially West Africa and East Africa, because uh, we, are, we have a lot of activists that are working in education, climate education, and education in general. I believe that this learning uh, opportunity by sharing uh, experience and idea is going to be a really, really great uh, opportunity for our youth in Africa, like me uh, as an activist working on girl child education and climate change education in northern part of Nigeria, where there is a uh, too much numbers uh, out of school children, especially like in my in my hometown, Kano State in particular, we have about uh, three million out of school children. Where those children then have never been to school, they're moving from one street to another 
in order to uh, get food and survive. So in general, in Nigeria, in general, we have about, according to uh, UNESCO, currently we have about more than 19 million out of school children. So I think uh, this webinar is very, very important to we use in Africa. It will give us more an opportunity and education to expand our activities that we are working on education. And the great thing is, um, the amazing thing now, uh, I have the opportunity uh, to, uh, I've been sponsoring by the grace of God next week, I will be in Rabat, Morocco. I, I, they sponsor me fully funded. I is uh, African youth, the organizing uh, conference in Morocco, which is sponsoring me to go and give a speech, which I'm going to share my experience and my working with Afri young African leaders. So, I think it's very, very important. Thank you once again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, we just for you to know, we, we are working together, even if, uh, as I was saying before, Sub-Saharan Africa is not clearly in the ETF mandate, but we are working together, as I show before, with other organizations, including, for example, the ITC ILO, the International Training Center of the ILO. And we have some activities uh, that we could actually run together also in, uh, in West African countries. So thank you very much for that idea. It's uh, absolutely, absolutely meaningful. And as you say, it's, uh, it's about keeping on sharing. And of course, last imagine last March, we had a, a meeting similar to this. And uh, the main request from the community members was to go for more practices and now we started this and it's hard to you know to keep uh, to keep up with those eh? because uh, imagine you get 750 good ideas and it's really hard to to work with all of them so we are working on it but keep on uh, keep on uh, proposing things and thank you i see also monica with the soft skills which has also been a uh, I would say a, a condition, a component of, of all the all the finalist practices. Every single practice, even the one that were more on the technical side of life, were mentioning strongly soft skills and gamification. So I see Monica that uh, we are on the same page. And uh, um, Mohamed talking about uh, augmented and virtual reality. Actually, on, on Wednesday after our event, uh, we attended with some of the participants, including uh, Professor Adam Kaplan from Turkey, who is also here with us. Uh, he gave a presentation at the Metaverse Learning Camp here in Torino. So it is a sort of a, I would say, innovation week. That's the way we called it for us. So we had the, the, this event uh, and then the Metaverse Learning Camp and today the the webinar, so we are giving us uh, a lot of work, which is good, of course. And I see that there is a, a wide interest in about, about STEM, STEM, STEM and STEAM education. So this is also about one of, the, of our practices. And uh, so I think there's, there's a lot of food for thoughts for us. So we will have to work a lot in the next month. I see we have a, a Question by Mohamed. Ah, Mohamed, please take the floor I, because we cannot see the all uh, all the participants. So I think if you can if you can give the floor to Mohamed, yes, there you go. Just unmute yourself and uh, feel free to speak. Question. I would like just to say that and thank you for your participation. I'm from Syria in the uh, I designed uh, a virtual of a uh, library and this library includes uh, learning and teaching tools with voice and I had an opportunity to participate and I voted for the winners, uh, including Dr. Hadra. I am an, an expert uh, instructor with Microsoft, been working for uh, three years. I participate in many uh, 
uh, re uh, virtual realities uh, on many platforms in all uh, uh, in the field of uh, edu education and interactive education. Thank you very much. We are honored to be present here with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohamed. Actually, it's uh, we we run. Uh, we Mohamed, Mohamed. Moment, 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 yes, moment. We, we, we organized actually a few months ago a webinar specifically on extended reality, and it would be great next time. We, for sure, we should have another one next year. So let's stay in touch. We, it would be great to have you there as a speaker. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm positively surprised by the quantity of... Uh, uh, inputs and suggestions that we are receiving and uh, of course we will collect them in, and analyze them in the in the following days uh, and uh, be sure that we will create uh, our uh, strategy for the next year also according to your uh, to your suggestions because they are really really needed and um, well as i as i said before you will also receive this uh, link to the online survey so we will ask somebody about mm -hmm. uh, about you and uh, about your once again uh, expectations and possible role in the future of the of the community from my side i would like to thank you so much because uh, uh, the participation was was very good i would thank you again our three uh, finalists and winners and all those uh, who participated in the Turin Award and were mm -hmm. here today. Yes, and if I, if I can just say uh, one, one closing word, uh, apart from thanking you as well, uh, as Roberto did, please uh, don't forget to, to register into the open space uh, part page of the community. As Merab was saying before, the, the more things we do, the more we engage people, but still we, we find many more people that say, ah, this is great, but I didn't know. And of course, it's impossible for us to reach uh, each one of you individually, as you can imagine. So the best thing is to register. Let me see if I can put here the, the link again in the chat. So it takes a, a moment. So feel, uh, remember to, to register there because like this uh, you will uh, you will not lose uh, any single uh, any single news uh, webinar invitation next competitions uh, call for activities uh, and all these uh, all these things so we believe it's uh, fundamental to keep connected as we discussed this week and uh, it's great to see that uh, great majority of the people stayed here with us even uh, be beyond the 15 minutes beyond the timing so I'm very thankful and uh, also thankful to Roberto and Marta for organizing this uh, fantastic uh, co-creation session. And uh, thank you, Aida. Thanks to all of, uh, all of you. I see some uh, known names and also some new names, even better. So I think uh, I, I can officially declare close the ETF uh, Innovation Week, which started Monday lunchtime and actually as a uh, has brought us so many ideas. I know some of you, like Roberto, were here in Torino with us. Marta was following online and helping from the distance. And Ermina, my colleague, who had to leave, the finalist. So it has been a fantastic week. And hail to innovation. And I think we should meet next time. And a great weekend to all of you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you, Fabio. So no, it's good. Okay.